Hi book friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Read. The new year is here is 2020. That feels like the future, doesn't it? Uh, this is going to be uh, just a little chat about my where I was in 2019 and what I plan for 2020. This was my first year on booktube which was really exciting. Learned a lot of good things, learned some really useful skills. If you go back, probably please don't look at my uh, booktuber, uh, look at my booktube newbie tag. I think it was something about what are you hoping to get from booktube or something like that. And one thing for me was just learning the video process and the editing, uploading YouTube whole system because uh, now as I'm launching my health coaching business, I can see where this is really going to be a useful tool to you. And I've been able to learn it through a hobby of booktube and something that I already love doing which doesn't have the high stakes of like my job. So just a quick look back at 2019 of what uh, what I read. I read 129 books in 2019, and that comes out to 41,663 pages. And of those 129 books, I gave an average of 4.1 stars. That seems high, right? So I think there's a combination of things happening. One, I don't think I'm, I'm definitely not a highly critical reader. I liked it or I didn't like it. I have an emotional connection to it or I don't. I really enjoy the characters and the story or I really enjoy the language of it. I tend to give a lot of four stars, um, mostly three and four stars with a handful of five stars in there. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to be a more critical reader because I suppose the more critical of a reader are, the less enjoyment you're actually getting out of these. Uh, I don't know. So it will be interesting to see how that average rating trend will, will go um, over the course of years. So that's it for 2019. That is in the past. Let's talk about 2020. Now, the big thing that's going to be happening for me in 2020, as far as booktube goes, is the booktube prize. Sorry, we're playing fetch. We're always playing fetch. Crash. We're okay. Robert over at Barter Hordes started and runs the booktube prize. And this is where we take, uh, we start from a field of, I believe, 48 books separated into groups of either six or eight. So either there are eight sets, of, eight sets of judges to read six books or six sets of judges to read eight books, some version of that. We each read them and then rank those books, not giving ratings, but just ranking. This was my, you know, number one favorite. This was my sixth favorite or least favorite of the sixth. And and then it, it goes in like, like, like brackets, like tournament style. And ultimately you end up, um, I think we end up with one final list of six where we will then rank them. So I have signed up both for uh, fiction and nonfiction. And as far as I understand, I would only be assigned to one of those groups at a time. I won't be doing fiction and nonfiction at one time. And I think we have two months each one month or two months each time to read uh, our group of six books. So that will be taking up a lot of the volume of my reading, but I have some other thoughts in mind too. I am doing my Down the Rabbit Hole with Alice project where I start off reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which I'm in the middle of right now and loving. And then from there, I see where that book take, takes me. And so I essentially will leapfrog from book to book based on this book reminds me of that, this book mentioned this book, uh, what have you, because I often will find in books that I'll be reading one book and it will bring up another book and it makes me wanna read that book and I buy that book and then I never read it. So I actually, I just wanna see what happens when I follow this trail of books starting with Alice and then we'll see where we end up at the end of December. On Instagram, I'm using the hashtag down the rabbit hole books for my down the rabbit hole with Alice book challenge. And then I just want to, in general, read more of the literary canon and it's kind of a flexible word. It could mean a lot of different things, but what I've done uh, primarily is I've taken the PBS top 100 books and the BBC's, um, what was it? 100 books that shaped our world or something like that. And I basically made like a Venn diagram of them and the crossover, there were I think 22 books that crossed over and I've specifically selected those books as well as just reading classics. And I have visit videos on both of those subjects. I will kind of loosely be following the Reading Women Challenge. I have it printed out there and in my bullet journal. So I don't know that I'll go out of my way to try to hit all of these, but maybe just kind of refer to it and uh, see how I'm doing as far as that goes. Um, maybe it will be a source of ins inspiration uh, for when I am looking for something to read and I can't figure it out. 
And then I have um, some series that I either want to start, continue, or finish. So first up we have a series that I would like to finish and that is the Magic, Shadows of Magic, what is it called? Shades of Magic. I would like to finish the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. I have the final book, A Conjuring of Light, to finish in this series. Kind of interested to see where this is going to go because the the first book we have the setup for parallel London worlds that Kel can can go in between. And then what's the girl's name? And then Lila, who's a, a common thief, just trying to, you know, survive in the world, uh, meet their lives, intertangle. And then in book two, we go in kind of a completely different direction. And there's like a magical tournament thing going on. And we get more information about more characters. I have no idea where we're going with this one. But I feel like if I don't read this soon, either I will never read it or I'll have to like start over with the series again. And what I enjoy most about these books is just like the fantasy adventure aspect of it. Ah! Just threw that onto the shelf. In the lines of continuing series, um, I would like to read Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence and then eventually Holy Sister as well. This is book two in the, uh, what's the name of the? Grey Sister is book two in the Book of the Ancestors series. And we follow Nona, who I, I assume that would be Nona there on the cover. And in book one, Nona is enrolled into this like assassin nunnery. And we start off there mostly uh, just kind of in the world of the school and learning about the world through her kind of everyday life, her inner, uh, her interactions with the other students and with the teachers and learning more and more about the world as well as her past. And then towards the end, we get a little bit of um, opening up into the wider, wider world and finding out uh, what's going on outside of the outside of the monastery. And I have no idea where book two is going to take us, but everyone I know who has read this has really, really loved it. And then we have three series that are very well loved that I would love to get in and just be a part of the world and the community of, of fandom for these. The first one is the Gentleman Bastard series, the first being The Lies of Locke Lamora. All I know about this is like thieves, heist, friendship. Sounds good to me. Then we have Mistborn, The Final Empire. This is the UK editions. I mean, if you're gonna buy them, why wouldn't you buy the UK editions, right? That's what Book Depository is for. I've never read any Brandon Sanderson, so I figured I should start here. And then finally we have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Again, UK covers, these are just gorgeous. Don't know a ton about these, but um, I know that the first kind of trilogy is about Fitz, and I assume that he's going to be an Assassin's Apprentice. I will also be continuing to read nonfiction, and I will link the video for my most anticipated nonfiction books. At the beginning of the video, I talked about that I had read, I talked about reading 129 books in 2019. Now I definitely do not plan to read 129 books in 2020. I probably shouldn't read more than 100 books. Why is that? Because I have a tendency to, particularly in the past year, I have used reading as kind of a noble excuse to not do other things. So I'm not laying around watching TV. I'm not laying around playing video games. I'm reading and that's good, right? Well, it is good, but it's also good to just like take care of business and I'm starting a business and I really dragged my feet. Um, I really dragged my feet a lot last year in, in doing that. And reading was the thing that I would turn to just because of, uh, I was just overwhelmed because I was overwhelmed with what I had to do business wise. So ideally I will be working much harder and spending much more time actually working on my business and have less time to read. But this also means that I need to prioritize my time better, spend less time scrolling and spend more of that would be scrolling time actually reading. Audiobooks are always a big part of my reading repertoire and that will continue. I've already read two audiobooks this month and I'm reading a third at the moment. I don't know, I haven't set my Goodreads challenge yet, but I might just set it at 52 for this year. With books, I'm certainly looking for quality over quantity. So I'm really looking forward to what 2020 holds in both my reading life and in my professional life. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.